Welcome to this week's episode of Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for Wednesday, May 8th, 2013. If you read the title, you can probably guess our top story comes from the world of biotechnology. Some scientists over at Princeton have made a bionic ear using 3D printing. Now the term bionic is somewhat vague, but it generally refers to the integration of electronics and biology. The fact that this ear is 3D printed is just the icing on the nerdy tech cake. Growing a new ear in general is already a complicated process, but the scientists found that 3D printing cells is a very convenient way to do it. This was done using essentially off-the-shelf 3D printing hardware, which means it has implications for non-bionic ear replacement as well. However, this isn't the first time 3D printing has been applied to tissues and organs, but this is the first time it's been applied to bionic organs. By the way, the bionic part of this ear is a coiled-up antenna within the cartilage that allows it to pick up radio signals. Obviously, this first organ was just a proof of principle and won't be transplanted onto a human anytime soon. The 3D printer was loaded with three primary substances, a hydrogel polymer often used for organ and tissue scaffolding, cow cells that eventually became cartilage, and silver nanoparticles that were laced throughout the structure and became the antenna. The final product had two wires coming out of the base toward a helical structure that replicated the human cochlea the organ responsible for actually translating sound into nerve impulses. In the future, this could be integrated with or replace a human cochlear to enhance or substitute hearing. Next for the scientists is integrating pressure and vibration sensors into a bionic ear so it could also perceive normal sound. It may be a while to fully develop, but it's still exciting news for the hearing impaired and transhumanists alike. And how they created this bionic ear is a good model for future integration of biology and electronics. Next is an update from the world of medicine. A group consisting of researchers from multiple institutions have made significant progress in developing a nanoparticle that could help counteract diabetes. Specifically, type 1 diabetes, which is actually an autoimmune disease that results in damage to the insulin-producing cells within the pancreas. People with this type of diabetes often need to frequently monitor their blood sugar content and sometimes directly inject insulin, which can be painful. Another complication is determining the correct dose of insulin for each individual and their blood sugar at the time, which is where these nanoparticles come in. They have a solid core of insulin and an outer layer of modified dextrin with an enzyme called glucose oxidase. Over that, the particles are either coated with biocompatible negative or positive coatings, based on alginate found in plants and chitosin found in shrimp cells, respectively. This allows the nanoparticles to attract each other, creating a network that stays put when injected under the skin, while still interacting with the blood. When exposed to high blood sugar, the enzyme's glucose oxidase break down some of that sugar into gluconic acid, which breaks down the dextrin, releasing some of the insulins within the particles. This allows the particle network to directly respond to changes in blood sugar, administering insulin accordingly. In tests with diabetic rats, this system was able to maintain normal blood sugar levels for up to 10 days before all the insulin was used up, and with no side effects because all the substances used can harmlessly dissolve in the body. If successful in humans, this could provide a far more convenient and safe way to deal with type 1 diabetes. We end with a story from the world of technology. This past week, you may have already heard some robotics news. Robotic flies taking flight and a robotic arm with a sense of touch. But here are some robotics news you probably haven't heard. Researchers from Carnegie Mellon University have developed a new system that allows robots to identify objects in their environment. Previously, many research groups would preload information and models of relevant objects into the memory of a robot before setting it loose in the environment. That's a problem if the robot is encountering a wide variety of objects and needs to be able to learn about new things. On the other hand, separating individual objects from the overall environment is difficult for a robot to do with visual analysis alone. Which is why these researchers are using multiple sensory inputs to help the robot learn. It has cameras, a connect for depth perception and 3D scanning, two arms to test picking things up, and knowledge about the environment with the context for different locations. It could determine if something was an object and generates its own models by seeing things, manipulating them, and whether they were on the floor, counter, shelf, etc. 
Combining these factors greatly reduced the computing power needed to learn about its environment. While this advanced object recognition may seem like the beginning of the robot apocalypse, this system is currently being utilized by HERB, which stands for Home Exploring Robot Butler. So this new and improved object recognition technology brings us one step closer to the robot butlers we all really want. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. In reference to our first story, what bionic organ would you want and what technology would you integrate into it? Try not to go for the obvious. Let us know your thoughts on that and all the stories in the comments.